Hey y'all, I'm Hannah. And I'm Jeremy. And we are the Savory Suitcase. Woo! And this is Restaurant Remake. Yes, it is. So yesterday, we went to the Columbia and got a nice uh, pickup option. So it was great. You just call ahead, you place your order, and then uh, they have multiple curbside spots that you can pick, pull up, you park. Um, they have cameras so they know when you're there, they come out, and just, you don't Hand have to get out of the car. Yeah, yeah, it's excellent. It was a great experience. I would highly recommend it. So we originally planned to get our takeout and maybe like head to a park or find like a picnic bench somewhere in Ebor, um, but it was pouring by the time mm. we actually picked up our order. So see that footage here. Woof. <sighs> yes. It was rough. That was a bad storm. So we actually ended up just going home and having a little taste of it, but we did drive through Ebor just now to kind of get some shots of the area, just because it's a really historic, you know kind of local Tampa favorite they have it's very historic I mean really is historic Tampa yeah it is it is the history of Tampa they have a, in a lot of the cigar shops down there still yeah. um, the old all the old buildings are original the streetcars mm, lots of roosters yeah we saw the roosters lots of wild roosters they just roam and you they were really singing the song of their people this morning <laughs> man I'll tell you That one sounds sick. That one's a little squeaky. Oh, the Rona. Very chatty this morning. It was nice. So we had our Columbia at home and uh, had a really nice experience, even though, you know, the atmosphere of the Columbia is really one of the better parts of the dining experience. So Yeah, you really, I mean, you know, the prices are a little bit, they're a little steep. Uh, Columbia is not not an inexpensive choice, but um, yeah, you really do definitely pay for for the experience uh, and the ambiance of the restaurant. And I'm really looking forward to remaking it. I think it's going to be simple, but I think it's one of those restaurants where food is simple, but sometimes that can be more difficult than more elaborate food, if that makes sense. Sometimes that's just, you know, the really fresh ingredients yes. and you're really relying on the actual food itself mm -hmm. to... You're relying on the ingredients to, to actually speak for the food and actually... And that's, personally, for my philosophy, that's what I believe. I believe in not overcomplicating things and keeping things simple um, and just using simple, fresh, local where you can. Um, I think that makes the best food. I don't think you always need 100 ingredients ingredients to make something tasty. You know, I think three, four things and, and you can really, when everything shines together, I think you can really make something good. You know, looking at the recipe for like the salad dressing on the 1905, the ingredients for the black bean soup, it's like what, five things? It's incredible, I had no idea. I would have assumed it would have been, you know, something insane, but no, oh, good stuff. So we'll see you back at our kitchen. All right, we're back in our home kitchen and I have given Jeremy the assignment of recreating these recipes. So the really cool thing is, is that the Columbia actually just has their recipes mm -hmm. online. So there was no guessing, there was no Googling to try and find a duplicate recipe. We're just gonna take it straight from the masters. Well, and for those of you that don't really know a lot about the Columbia Restaurant Group, um, it's a very Tampa thing. It's a very Florida thing in general. Um, there's only a couple of different locations of the Columbia restaurant, the original being in Ybor City, which is in downtown Tampa. Um, there used to be a location at the old um, the old St. Pete Pier. There's one down in St. Armand Circle in Sarasota. So there's really only a few and they're kind of all in this Bay Area, they call it in Tampa. Um, so it's very old school, um, started uh, back in 1905. Mm, that's why they call that the salad, the 1905, the 1905 salad. salad. They also do a really cool thing um, called 1905 Day, mm. um, and that's a super popular thing. We've never ventured out because it's just always it always brings tons of people and it's just wild. But what they do is once a year they roll back their pricing to what it was in 1905, so you can get things like. Um, the, this black bean and soup for like two bucks or something crazy. No, not even that, like five cents. Yeah, it's a, cup a, a cup of coffee like is like a nickel. couple pennies, yeah. So it's just a fun thing and it's a good way to go try it out. Um, their normal everyday prices are a little bit 
It's steeper a, than that. It's a treat yourself kind of experience. It is. You know, you go, you get the flamenco dancer, yeah. they do like a special show. Um, so it's a really neat place. I highly suggest if you're in Tampa, you can't miss it. But you know, if you need to get a little taste of it while you're kind of yeah. held up at home, it, it, it's a good uh, warm day meal. It's a good light yeah. lunch. It's good for a light lunch or even a light dinner. Right. Um, so yeah. So the first thing that we're going to start doing before I kick her out of here. So we've actually gone ahead and we've soaked our dried black beans overnight. Okay. So the thing that's really important, you can see how black the water is. Um, and they've actually plumped up and some of them have even split. So they've taken on a lot of the water. Uh, but in, before you do that, it's important to sift through them. So sometimes there are little stones or pebbles um, that can be found in bags of dry beans that you want to sift through and pick out. We did only have one small one, but that's definitely not something that you want to bite into. Okay. So once they're soaked, uh, 24 hours minimum, what we're going to do is we're going to put them in a colander and then I'm going to rinse them under some cool water in the sink and then we're going to drop them right into the Instant Pot. Okay, so now that we've gone ahead and drained and rinsed our black beans, the chef has come to uh, to inspect what's happening. Okay. He there heard we were making black beans. Mm -hmm. He's like, oh boy, they're gonna be gassy. <laughs> oh no, mama, daddy, gassy at bed today. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, it's, it's, listen, it's real. Okay, so you're gonna take your beans, drop them in the pot. I think you can handle the rest of this. Mm -hmm. I think I'm good. Okay, so now, we actually have 10, 10 total cups and the recipe calls for water. So this dish is actually... Hello? I turned it on so it could start heating up. Excuse you. Thank you. Quiet on set. Um, so we have 10 total cups of liquid. Now I used a little bit of chicken stock. This dish is actually traditionally vegetarian at the Columbia, so it's a good vegetarian option for anybody. Um, I had a little bit of chicken stock left over in the fridge, so I just decided to use it up. You can use vegetable stock, whatever stock you'd like, um, or you can just use water, okay? So we're gonna add 10 cups of water or mixed liquids into our Instant Pot. Okay, so um, what we're gonna go ahead and do, so we've got our beans and our liquid, water, stock, whatever you chose, in our pot, okay? And then what we need to do is we're gonna sweat down some um, minced white onion and some green bell peppers with some oregano and some cumin. Um, we're gonna saute that up a little bit and then add that as our aromatics into the Instant Pot before we seal it up and let it cook. While this is kind of heating up, I'm just gonna drizzle it into the pan. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead. I go always go with my peppers first because they always take just a little more to cook than onions. That's what you want to hear. You want to hear some good sizzle. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna sweat these out. So you don't want the heat to be so extremely high right at the beginning. You do because you're gonna shock it with the temperature of the cold onion and the peppers. Um, so you can, it's okay to have the heat high, but you can hear how it's starting to die down now. So we're going to turn down the heat just a little bit because we're not looking for color. We're not caramelizing or doing anything like that. So to this pan, we're going to add a couple-ish spoons worth of chopped garlic. One, two, again, it's a lot of soup, so it's okay. Alrighty. We're going to take a good sprinkling of some kosher salt. So right now, this is the only seasoning that this entire batch of soup, from the beans to the water to the onions, the peppers, this is the only salt that this recipe has gotten. I did spill some. You got to take some of that spill and go over there. Okay. So we're just going to stir this in and kind of let it sweat. You also don't want the heat to be too high up because you'll burn the garlic and that kind of can turn it pretty bitter. Okay, so as we're cooking, you can kind of see as we're sweating out the peppers and onions, you can see that there's a lot of water starting to come out of the vegetables. That's exactly what we want. We want to pull some of it out and concentrate this pepper and onion flavor, kind of wake everybody up a little bit. And as we keep cooking here, as we keep sweating it out, all that liquid is going to evaporate and it'll start to... It'll... You see that? 
jailbreak. Okay, so as we're spreading these out, we're gonna go ahead and add to our pan, we're gonna add a half teaspoon of ground cumin. Okay. And then we're gonna add a full teaspoon of um, crushed oregano. Now we're using dry, it's what the recipe calls for. If you're gonna use fresh, that's okay. You wanna use a little bit more. Dried oregano is gonna be a little bit more potent. Um, and then there's a lot of, re of oregano in the dressing for the salad as well. Okay, so a full teaspoon of the oregano with our cumin. Okay, now we got some real good smells going. That cumin is starting to heat up and the oregano, everything's starting to kind of perfume. Our peppers, onions, and garlic. There's a lot of good, smells like the Columbia in here, I'm not gonna lie. Like it actually does. Sous chef coming to check it out. Uh, and then the last ingredient that we need are bay leaves, okay? So we're gonna take one bay leaf. Now listen, if you used bay leaves in the past, you might have a whole package of them in your spice cabinet. If you don't use them regularly, they could be really old. If they're old, they're useless, I promise. If they're more than a couple months old. So go ahead and spend the dollar or whatever it is to get another packet of dry bay leaves. I'm actually gonna use two because I really like the flavor. It just kind of gives everything a nice kind of well-rounded earthy flavor and they're gonna get pulled out at the end. Throw them away. They're useless. They are. So we are going to go ahead and throw this, all this mixture, into our pot of beans. So we're going to dump all that in, give this a good stir, and then we're going to go ahead and seal up the Instant Pot. We're going to set it on high pressure for 15 minutes, and then we're going to check the beans and make sure that they're tender. While our black bean soup is going in the Instant Pot, we're gonna go ahead and get all of the components of our salad ready. So you wanna make your dressing the day before. So this actually is kind of a two day process, even though it's, a, it's just easy, these are easy recipes, they do take a little bit of time. So when you're soaking your beans the night before, go ahead and make your dressing at the same time. If you have a mason jar, it works great for this because you can just drop it all in, give it a little shake and throw it in the fridge and you're good to go. Um, so the ingredients of the dressing are as follows. You need a half a cup of a good quality extra virgin olive oil. Now I use some of this Peruvian olive oil from our in-laws when they recently went to Peru last March. No, not last March or the year before. It's been a while. It's been a year or so. Um, we use it sparingly, but we did not finish it. Boo hoo. But for a good reason, because okay? it's gonna give you a lot of really good flavor for this dressing. Okay, so along with that extra virgin olive oil, you need a quarter cup of white wine vinegar. You need four teaspoons of the dried oregano and three cloves of chopped garlic with salt and pepper to taste. So you just literally put everything in, shake it up in the jar, let it sit overnight. Easy peasy. Okay, so we've got our dressing, it's ready to go off to the side. Now, I have to be a little bit particular about the types of lettuce that I can eat. So I have to eat, so I have to eat, um, if I'm gonna eat lettuce in its raw form, um, I have to eat um, shredded iceberg, okay, because it breaks up the best. You can use whatever lettuce you like. I'm pretty sure at the Columbia, what do they call for? The recipe does say iceberg lettuce, but... Okay, so not. probably not shredded like this, like for tacos. We've got our dressing, we've got our shredded lettuce, and then we've got two Roma tomatoes that we're going to cut up into small chunks. Okay, so we've got our chunk tomatoes. We're going to put off to one side of the bowl here. We've got our manzanilla olives, which are a Spanish olive. These are stuffed. Um, you can use whatever olives you like. I don't care. I hate them. They're not for me. They're for her and because they go in the salad. So here we are. We're going to crack all oh, the smell. I hate olives, y'all. Like I can't. Black, green stuff, blue cheese. I don't care. Don't put them near me. I don't want to smell them. And... <sighs> Listen, because the disdain for olives and I are so, it, it's strong, okay? So I'm just gonna take some and I'm gonna put them out on a paper towel. Cool, so I'm just gonna dry them off a little so they're not so briny and salty and we're gonna drop them in another part of our bowl here. <laughs> oh, come on. She didn't catch it, guys. 
All right, so we got our lettuce, tomatoes, olives. Now we're gonna go ahead and take our, we're using baby Swiss cheese. You can use whatever Swiss you like. I don't care. Okay, so I'm gonna cut this in half, and then we're gonna cut, if, you, if you've had the salad before, you've seen it, it's like thin, like planks or like little strips. So we cut it in half, and we'll stack them on top of each other, and just cut straight down. Okay, and then you wanna kinda like peel everybody apart. So that could be a little annoying. Maybe you should do that before you cut them. Okay, so we're gonna take our Swiss cheese, and then we're gonna do the same thing we just did with the cheese with some ham. So the recipe just calls for baked ham. We happen to have like a honey maple ham. Might be a little different because it's gonna have a little maple-y flavor. I would just use like a normal, like a Virginia baked ham. You could use Boar's Head Tavern ham. Um, something that's gonna be, you know, relatively kind of like what you would think of as like a Thanksgiving-y sort of ham. Um, so we're gonna, I patted this dry as well so we're not adding excess moisture. So we're gonna take this. I guess you caught it that time, y'all. Um, how are we gonna do this? Let's see. So I'm gonna fold our little stack in half. Actually, that's a lie. I'm gonna cut it in half, stack it, and then we're gonna cut strips off of this guy. Okay, and again, just kind of feather it apart with your finger so it's in nice little strips that kind of matches the cheese. We're gonna take that and we're gonna go in another quadrant here. And then what we have left to do is the, if you've ever been to the Columbia, um, they do their 1905 salad table side. So they come out with all these ingredients prepared already, cut up, and it's kind of already in the bowl like this. And then what they do is they take some Worcestershire, covered this before. It's hard to pronounce, I don't care, don't come at me. So we're gonna go in with our one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire? Worcestershire, Worcestershire. I'm just gonna kind of go around the bowl. It's two tablespoons. Okay, I lied to you, it's two tablespoons. So I did one, we're gonna do two. Okay, and then we have one quarter cup of grated Parmesan Romano cheese. We're gonna sprinkle that guy kind of over the top. And then we're gonna do the juice of a lemon. So the lemon's juice a little easier if you kind of roll them. <gasps> Beans are done. Oh, that beautiful bean footage. Um, lemons tend to juice up a little easier if you kind of roll them back and forth and break it up a little bit before you cut them open. So you're gonna roll it, and ooh, this one's a juicy one. Now you wanna, I always squeeze it, cut side up in my hand over another hand so that we catch any seeds that might fall out. Okay, so then lastly, I'm gonna put this lid back on the dressing. Things have separated out a little bit, so we're gonna give it a good shake a -roo. Those of you that like technical terms, this is a temporary emulsion, meaning the vinegar separates from the oil after just sitting after a temporary amount of time. Okay. Alrighty. So I'm just gonna take a little dressing for now. Dress it to your liking. Uh, we made a double batch, otherwise I would probably just dump it all in. We're just gonna take a quarter cup, start there, dress it. Yeah, maybe a little bit more, it's a lot of lettuce. Okay. Now that our dressing's in, we're gonna take everything and you wanna gently toss together, okay? You don't wanna mash. We're just gently tossing all of the delicious ingredients together. So you can see the cheese, the ham, the tomatoes, the olives. Before we go and eat this, since it's now gonna start wilting, we're gonna check our beans and then we're gonna come back to you. So you wanna release the steam very carefully on your Instant Pot. Okay, so here's the deal. We went in on 15 minutes, high pressure. They're really close, they're really good, but we want them a little bit, a little bit more creamy. So we're gonna go ahead and put them back on for another 10 minutes on high pressure. 
And then at that point, they should be perfect. They should be good to go. So in the meantime, we're gonna go chow out on some of our 1905 salad as an appetizer before we get to our main course of soup. Um, we're actually gonna serve ours with cauliflower rice instead of white rice or even brown rice you could use at home. Um, and then they recommend that you use a garnish of some chopped white onion, but Hannah doesn't like raw white onions, so we're not gonna do that. Even though I don't like olives and we had to use those. Just saying, marriage is compromise. Some things are important. You're always right. Yes, thank you. Mr. Right and Mrs. Always Right. Salad, please. Salad, please. Oh, yes. Pronto tanto. Okay, so we did a little, little extra shaky cheese on top because we like cheese in this house. I'm gonna see what, see what she thinks. Tastes like the real thing? Tastes like you got the recipe right from the restaurant. I do that. When you start to see the beans, and they're like busted open like this, they're kind of high chihuahua. When they're kind of busting at the seams like that and they're nice and creamy, that's when you know it's done. So using dried beans is much better than using canned. You can use canned and you don't have to cook this nearly as long. The only reason you're cooking it is to actually cook the bean, okay? So if you use canned beans, you could dump all this into a pot on your stove, bring it to a boil for a couple minutes and you're good to go. Dried beans just have a better texture, a better flavor. They have more character to them. But again, canned beans would be totally fine. This is just more authentic. Um, and this is something, again, this will hold for a long time. You could freeze this in quart baggies in the, in the freezer and pull it out anytime you need a quick meal. Um, we're actually gonna serve ours with cauliflower rice. So I'm gonna add a little bit of cauliflower rice in the bottom of our bowls here. take a little bit of that rice for garnish here right on the top so that you can see that there's a nice little prize sitting in the bottom. He's called for our rice with rice. Oh, it's a prize. Now we would all prefer rice, of course. But that does make this keto. Um, I believe that it also make this paleo. There's no processed ingredients. We started from dry beans. Um, yeah, should be pretty healthy. Low fat, very low fat. And it Smell good? Smells like the Columbia, huh? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, guys, so there you have it. We have the Columbia Restaurant Groups, the Columbia and Ebor. We have their black bean, vegetarian black bean soup. Dig in and enjoy. That's a little hot. A little hot? Mm -hmm. Are they tender? Yeah. Mmm. Oh yeah, just the difference in the beans. Not so processed, like they actually have a flavor. <laughs> We're gonna link the website that the Columbia has for the recipes that they are uh, just making available to anybody. So if you wanna make these items, if you wanna make any of their specialty dishes like paella, the mm -hmm. chicken Arroz and yellow. Arroz con pollo, mm -hmm. chicken and yellow rice. Yeah, sure. So Good you, stuff. You can say it in Spanish, that's mm -hmm. fine. You know. Um, so from their website, you can also make a reservation. So if you're going to be in town, if you're planning a trip safely, of course, um, we know that they're following all of the um, rules and guidelines as far as COVID-19. And we so did be our pickup as, as just curbside. So yeah. we grabbed it and then head, headed yeah. back. So. so even if you're in a hotel and you're not comfortable eating um, in the restaurant, you can always call ahead and do a pickup order, swing by, pick it up and eat it in your hotel room. Pretty authentic, you know, still to be able to do that. The ambiance in the Columbia is pretty awesome still. Um, but if you'd like to do that, you can also link a reservation. You can make a reservation through the website. So thank you guys so much for enjoying it, for enjoying us. I hope you enjoy this. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Hannah's going to keep burning her mouth on the soup over here because she's impatient. It needs to cool just a moment. It does. Yeah. Yeah. So please uh, like and subscribe yep. and hit that bell below. We are so excited to keep making these videos and we're 
so glad that you guys are joining us along this journey. So we yes. we really are great, very grateful. So. Yeah, we're grateful. We hit a hundred. We hit a hundred viewers. A hundred subscribers. Hopefully more by the time this one comes out. So. Yeah. So, like she said, click that bell, subscribe, like our video, give us a comment below, and uh, we'll see you next time. See you next week.